Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Today we're going to be working on the Steel MS-170. If you guys know, I recently got this new 170 as my old detail one kind of kicked the bucket. It had enough. After several years of carving and doing other things, the saw is just, I think it's done. I don't feel like working on it. I don't feel like messing with it anymore. It's done its time and it's paid for itself 20 times over. Today, we're going to be looking at swapping out the sprocket and the bar on this saw. And we're going to be going with something a bit smaller than what it currently runs. So if you guys are interested in turning this into more of a detail saw, stick around because I'm going to show you how to do it. Guys, yeah, like I said, we're looking at the Steel MS-170. Now stock, my Steel MS-170 comes with a 3 8 pitch chain it has a 16 inch bar 3 8 pitch chain that's 0 .43, 0 0.43 gauge all right so it's a pretty small chain to begin with and it does pretty good cutting and those sort of things i want to customize this saw and make this have a shorter bar now the steps we're going to go through you can put a dime tip bar on you could just put on a smaller 14 inch bar in order to do that we have to swap out the sprocket now i say i have to swap out the sprocket the reason being is i want to have the ability to run quarter pitch chain now if you guys do know or you don't know a detail bar a dime tip detail bar kind of like this cannon normally i run steel but i do have one cannon dime tip bar that runs quarter pitch chain that means you need a quarter pitch sprocket the saw comes with a 3 8 at least mine does so what that means is i had to order up a quarter pitch sprocket now you get the sprocket from the dealer i, I have a tough time like just finding them online i go to my steel dealer i order up the things i need right through them and everybody's like oh you don't want to promote it listen that's what i do that's how i know i can get exactly what i need to get I go right through them. Now, if you want to order up the quarter pitch sprocket that's going to fit your MS-170, I'll give you the part number. The part number is 1123-77A. All right, now that is the part number that is stamped right on this quarter pitch sprocket right from steel. So that is the plan. Uh, the tools you're going to need to make this swap, your scrunch, your T-wrench, all right? That's really it. The one that came with the saw, that, that's really all we're going to need and a little bit of patience. You guys are going to be able to swap this thing out real quick. So the last saw that I had, I ran the detailed dime tip bar, this Canon. I had a steel one on there as well, but the Canon that I got with me. What I actually want to put on this chainsaw today is a 14 inch quarter pitch bar. All right. It's going to, well, it's a 14 inch bar and it's going to run quarter pitch chain and 0.043 gauge now this is the bar all right i'll give you guys some close-ups before we're all done and this is the nose of that bar okay you can see it's bigger than the dime tip but it's not as big as the regular one see the difference okay so we're going to get rid of that bigger nose and go down to a smaller nose and i think this is going to be good for detail work and then i can jump over to a saw that has the dime tip bar. I, I, I have a feeling I'm going to like this for furring. I use my MS200, MSA200 battery saw, and that's got this same bar on it. And honestly, whew, honestly, I just want that option in gas. Parts. We got our sprocket. We got our new bar, right? That's going to fit the sprocket, all quarter pitch stuff. And we got to get a quarter pitch, 14 inch chain, 43 gauge, it's a 72 link, okay? So if you just walk in and you're not talking to the dealer and you want to do this yourself, you need to make sure things match up. These are not going to say they fit an MS-170 because technically they do not because not once 170s don't come with that quarter pitch sprocket. Once you swap out for the sprocket, they will then fit, okay? So to do this setup, I already gave you a part number on the sprocket. The bar I'm running, part number 3005008-3409-XE. All right, and it's a 14-inch, uh, 72-link, 0.043 gauge. That's what's on the bar. Come over here to the chain. 
chain part number 36700050072 14 inch bar 72 links quarter pitch chain 0.03 gauge okay down here in the bottom it says 71 pm372 those are what we're going to be putting on today once we have that quarter pitch sprocket on though you can pull that bar and chain off and you can put a dime tip bar and chain on but that that i don't we'll do that another time let's get with this we're gonna grab our wrench guys and we gotta get these off now i've already loosened mine up so i didn't have to really crank on them for the video get our nuts out of here this is also a good time to take air clean everything out clean it all up okay now I've already loosened mine, but if you don't know how to loosen your bar, which you should, if you're going to be running saws, this is a very basic thing you should know. On the 170, the tensioner is right here. One way I'll tighten it, one way I'll loosen it, okay? Mine's already loose because I've already gone ahead and, and kind of done all this. So I'm going to set this bar and chain aside. And actually that bar and chain fits my setup on my MS-250. I've got a video putting this sprocket right off of 170 onto the 250 and running those smaller bar and chains some guys might not like that i like that smaller bar and chain though i feel like it cuts way faster and i'm getting thinner kerf cuts and i'm able to do a little more of a detail sort of cut on small to medium sized carvings and honestly i run that 250 on everything but that's a, again another video if you guys want to see that look up above there's a link so here we are right we're looking at this bad boy there is a snap ring right here okay you got to get that off, but don't lose it. I take the end of the of the T-wrench, and there's a little gap in there, and I put the corner of the T-wrench in, and I pry it off a little, kind of twisting it. All right, but you got you to gotta kind of hold everything and watch where it flies if it goes flying off. Give it a little bit of a pry. It usually doesn't come all the way off. Sometimes it will. If you can get in there right, give it a little pop. Okay, so the corner was in there and I just popped it. I'm gonna pop it off the rest of the way. Have my hand there so it doesn't go flying. All I did was pop it down. And I pull off this washer. This washer is concaved. The snap ring goes in the spot that's concaved. So this weird back, this side, faces, goes on just like that, okay? So remember which way it goes. Pull this off. All right, cool beans. I've already had mine off. It's clean. We'll set that aside. We need to grab our quarter pitch sprocket. Now, you see this line? If you follow that line over the edge, there's a little groove. This groove goes to your oiler, the rod that'll spin your oiler. If you look down in here, way down in your saw, it'll be easier once you have your own apart, own saw apart. But there is a tiny little tab sticking out between these two pieces, way down in there. That's going to your oiler. So when you put this on, you wanna line up that line with the tab that's behind this braking system, okay? It's all the way down, you'll see it sticking out. And that groove goes on that little little piece, so, okay? If it goes, it goes, it'll see in there like it's supposed to. If not, it'll still be sticking up. So that's on. Put that washer back on. We want the part that bubbles out to face the machine, the concave to face us. And our snap ring. I usually put the open end facing down, put it on top, hold it, use the end of the flathead, give it a pop. Look at it. Everything's on all the way as it should be. Okay? Not bad. So that's done. Quarter pitch sprocket is on. Now let's go over to our new bar in our new chain. Try to keep everything here so you guys can see. Let's get this chain out of the box. Now some people see chains or bars being ran upside down. Every couple times you sharpen, it's a good idea to undo everything, pull your bar off, right, right side up, and run it upside down. These wear differently as the chain runs over the top so it constantly have this pressure coming over. So if you flip it, now the pressure is on the other side and you Get a little more wear length out of your bar, a little more life out of it, okay? Normally, I'll put the chain right on the bar, like so. 
when you're looking at it, what way should those teeth be facing on the bottom? This is very simple stuff, but some people I have seen on new carver pages get it wrong. If, if this is going to be the top of your bar and this is going to be the bottom of your bar, these teeth should be cutting toward you on the bottom and cutting away from you on the top. Okay. Right, so take the chain, start it on the sprocket, pop the bar over the two um, bolts here. Now your adjuster might pop right in there and it might not. Mine's not. That means you got to come over here with the T-wrench, loosen it up. As it's loosening, there's a little rod in there. Your tensioner is moving. You got to get it back to the hole that we're talking about down here. All right, make sure your chain is on the sprocket and not between the washer and the sprocket. All right, hold it all back. Come on the other side with our tensioner I talked about. Once you get a couple spins, it starts to tighten. Pretty good. All right, we will adjust that once we get everything together. I gotta blow this cover off and then we'll put this thing on. Clean that up. Let's put our cover back on. Throw the nuts back on. Finger tight. We gotta have some slack in that bar and chain. All right, so that's just loose, that's not slack. Slack should be the chain hanging down, it shouldn't be super tight. So these are just finger tight, not crazy tight, just enough to hold it all together. And I gotta back off our adjustment over here. Obviously you'll figure it out. One way tightens, one way will loosen. Now before everything's tight, that's why I wiggle the bar up and down. Okay, so you see that chain drop? I like to have the tooth in there to that groove. Let me see here, hopefully you guys can see. All right, so you guys see the upper part of the tooth? Right there. And then it steps down. I like to have that piece in the bar, roughly. Roughly, okay, just some of it up in there. When you tighten it up, everything moves on you anyway. And when you get cutting, this chain's going to stretch and you're going to have to uh, go ahead and probably adjust it anyway. It's just kind of the way it goes. So, all right. Okay, everything's tight. Chain still has some play in it. If you do this, be careful because the chain is sharp. Your hand slips, you will cut your finger. All right, so I know that sprocket's right, but just in case you got sprockets goofed up or something, see how freely this spins? All right, I mean, it's, I, I'm not forcing this. I got a good sprocket, nothing's catching. There's no issues. I know, you know, I, we already know they're quarter inch, quarter inch stuff, but it all lines up fine. Let's fire it up quick in here. Make sure everything's gonna run. fairly quick swap i think i'm going to throw my gear on we're going to go out in the tent let's carve a quick little bear with this setup and uh see what we think i i got a feeling i'm going to like it i mean the nose is a bit smaller than the original you guys can see and uh, i think we'll be able to get a little more details smaller carvings blocking medium carving that sort of stuff so let's head on out there you guys check out this commercial real fast and uh let's carve a quick bear Real quick, guys, I just wanted to, to note, swapping out our sprockets, make sure we keep our old one and our old bar, all right? If we decide to go to a dime tip bar, you can. You don't have to change the sprocket now that it's a quarter pitch. You can just order up a dime tip bar. When I order a bar, I get one bar and two chains, always. Um, normally, I'm running steel, so you can get it right through steel, a steel bar and two carving chains to go with it. And same thing here. So now check this out. This 170 is ready to go for all kinds of applications, all right? So our 170 can be a medium size carving blocking saw with the regular 16-inch bar. We can go down 
swap out our sprocket and we can now run a 14 inch 43 gauge quarter pitch chain and bar okay because we put a quarter pitch sprocket on it with that sprocket we can bounce back and forth between these two bars right here the dime tip bar and this 14 inch bars so you can run two bars with that one sprocket for sure if not three i know they make a 10 inch that'll fit this if you want to go back to the 16 you got to put your sprocket back on but here's quick easy swap stuff right here guys you can just swap your dime tip bar for this bar easy peasy Alright guys, there you go. Just a quick bear, quick firming. Didn't take a ton of time. We just ripped it out real quick with the 170 in the new setup. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you end up doing this setup, let me know how it works for you. Leave me some comments, guys. Give the video a thumbs up. Hit subscribe if you guys haven't already. And if this video on this channel really helps you guys out and you want to give back, Check it out, you can always become a member and support the channel directly. If not, no big deal. These videos are free, so check them out, right? Also, if you guys wanna rock some channel merch, I've got this stuff set up in the store tab or down below the videos. You guys purchase merch, it helps support the channel as well and I greatly appreciate it. Plus, you guys get to wear some Kyle Hall woodworker stuff. Cool beans, right? All right, you guys, hope you have an awesome day, have an awesome weekend, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.